there are some people with some mental illness that really put them in an extreme mm. where they are really good at something. If mm. it's art, if it's IT, mm. and we still put them in our normal, you know, education system. Mm. Mm. Do you think there is a way probably that these children can be identified and helped early so that they are steered towards where their talent is at? I wish that was possible. If that was possible enough, and we love such institutions in Kenya, it will be very good. You know, those institutions are very few. And if you find them, they're very expensive. In childhood, we also have illnesses that um, parents need to look out in their ch children. A child who was performing well in school suddenly changes their performance, or at home they seem uncontrollable. They are overly aggressive, they are restless all the time, and uh, they don't seem to be comfortable just doing one thing. They want to do many things at the same time. It could point to a childhood mental illness. So if, if at all we can get more of these institutions, for these people who are special, at an early age it is identified and then they strengthen on that, on these institutions, and maybe the fee is waived, it can be good. How did you get to know that you actually have a mood disorder, and specifically this bipolar disorder? I came to know I have a bipolar disorder after a lot of diagnosis, and it took I struggled before I, it came to be known that I'm suffering from bipolar disorder specifically. When you are moving from hospital to hospital, doctor to doctor, being admitted and treated and are not getting well, what exactly were the doctors or the medics at that point treating? I could ask them, but they could just tell me just to go and use this tablet, but there was no improvement. So mm -hmm. I struggled until I met a friend who could holy fathers to Madari. How why when you are having the the episodes of the mood disorder, uh, what 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 did you know what they were when you, like when you are hyper, what were you going through? What what were you feeling at that point? When I was in a hyper mood, hyper I wanted to be the president. I thought I have a lot of money in the bank. Okay, I was out of reality, feeling you're a very important person than the way you are supposed to be, you see? When I was the law, I used to feel like contemplating suicide, feeling worthlessness, don't want to do anything. You want to, don't to be, don't to eat, don't want to talk to anybody. I could just lock myself in a house. Mental illness can actually lead to uh, mortality, death. People commit suicide when they have mental illness. People commit homicide. People overdose on drugs and alcohol. Al drug and alcohol use can lead to severe health problems. And not to mention also somebody who is perhaps has a psychotic illness, they're not taking care of their personal, you know, daily activity of grooming and living. They can acquire diseases. Maybe they are, they are sleeping in the cold, they'll get TB. So it equally uh, needs to be put in uh, a lot of you know, weight. Yeah. Then the other thing is that... We reach a point of now I'd rather commit suicide. And most of them, they either commit suicide or the way he was sleeping out in the night throughout, he will catch pneumonia and die, you see. But today, I, he cannot even go out in the cold. Himself, he will say, the weather has changed. Let me get my jumper. And then my daughter says, Mom, can you hear that? He's healing. <laughs> and himself, he will send him to the shop at 7 today, and he will tell you, it's dark. Can I switch on the security light? Till I ask him, you used to walk in the dark the whole night. Nowadays, you want to switch on the security light just to go to the shop. And he says, yes. So at least when we hear that, we say, is healing. How do people normally handle mental, or somebody's mental health when they're at home, before they've been diagnosed? What are the things that they do to handle or to deal with somebody with mental illness? They, they don't know whether this, patient, this is a patient. So they usually see as if this is somebody who is unruly, somebody maybe who is using substances. They usually suspect that they are 
maybe a smoking bank and therefore has become uh, very uncooperative. Sometimes they even beat them, they uh, chase them away from their homes. And in the long run, uh, they end up coming to the hospital. How did your family, close friends and relatives take or view you after you were diagnosed with the illness? Before I was diagnosed, all they came to know what I was suffering from. Most of my friends and relatives abandoned me. It's only my sister and my parents who stood by me. They're the one who used to, to go to hospital from one hospital to another looking for help. But other friends, they could say, who oh, are he has, he has, he has been witched, he has been cast, such comments, so nobody who could want to be associated with me. When relatives uh, come and they're new, they're bringing their person who they're suspecting to have mental illness, so they're new to this place, they're new to the whole idea of mental health, what are some of the things or some of the perceptions and views they have about mental health before you've even had a chance to talk to them and explain to them what it's all about? What are these things they think about mental health? In fact, when they come, and especially their first time, mm -hmm. these relatives are usually in fear. Uh, and we do understand them because we know the stigma about Madari Hospital. Mm -hmm. And when you find out from them where they are fearing, they tell you they've had their fights here, even the patients are fought by other patients. So we try to allay the anxiety mm -hmm. and we, we handle them uh, accordingly. Is it just fear, um, is it just fear of Madare Hospital or is it about mental health and mental illness? It's about mental illness. Mm -hmm. they, they, they don't have the know-how about what mental health is, mm -hmm. about what mental illness. So especially those who encounter it the first time, they usually have a hard time. Mm -hmm. They are usually heartbroken. They're usually very low. And they don't know how to handle the mm -hmm. patient. In line with African culture, there's a lot of myth uh, that some people believe uh, when you're mentally ill, you've probably been bewitched, so to speak, or maybe it's a curse that has come to your family. And there's a lot of tendency for people to go to, uh, to perform some traditional rituals. Uh, some people will go to traditional healers. Some people will even go to, uh, they're called sorcerers, to try and you know, see whether they'll get better. There's also a tendency to turn to religious or spiritual healing. And uh, but at the end of the day, as much as those may help them a little bit psychologically, but they're not really dealing with the, the pathology of the illness itself. In fact, one of the main things that people think and will make you waste time is superstition. Others will tell you, look for somebody to pray. Others will tell you, I don't know, go do this. I don't know, take him to church. I don't know. But at the end of it all, to save such a person is medication. Just like HIV, you will deny and deny and deny and be superstitious. But if you don't go for medication, you will die. I have to accept myself and to adherence to my medication so that I can live a more a normal life, like a normal life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so after a session of counseling, I came to also to, to, lead, to accept. I want, I don't want that life that I have been, that I'm suffering, that is a life, uh, I, uh, I did not like what I was going through. So I wanted a change. When you are having um, the episodes, uh, you are at one point you are hyper, at another point your, your mood is low, you're depressed. Did you feel or know that probably this is not right? Or did you think other people are the ones who are not on the right? At first, to be honest, you feel it is right. And you say the other people are the which are not right. Because at times, 
their way I could see the things are not supposed to be done the way I'm not done the, the, they are done the way they are not supposed to be done which does not concern me. When I used to have those moods I could I could not suffer for long it's only for one two weeks then I become to my cautious. Then I feel there is something that is long somewhere. From coming to Madare, you get admitted, and then you are discharged, you've been on treatment. How has this whole journey been like for you? I never knew there was mental illness in the first place. I was brought here like a new place. I never know about it. Mm -hmm. It was a new place an environment, everything, even the condition. I never knew anything about this place or had. At there is a place people go who have a mental illness. But I find myself here singing, shouting. I was talking so much, making a lot of noise. Are we handling mental health and our perceptions about mental health better? Or is it just the same or has it gotten worse? In fact, we are doing it very well because we even have the second generation antipsychotics, mm -hmm. which are working very well. That one I, I have witnessed. When I came here, we only had the first generation, the CPZ, mm. the, yeah, especially the CPZ, that's mm. what we had. When you start your journey to mental recovery, mental health is a very important aspect of your health. So mental recovery, when you are mentally sick and now you are on medication to be sober or be to be on your right mind, mm -hmm. it has been costly for me. In terms of everything, medication is the most challenging thing in my life. Mental, treating mental illness and maintaining it is very costly. First, I used to take my first generation medication, which used to affect me so much. Side so effect that I never able to tolerate. Actually, in most government hospital facilities, there is a, a most government uh, referral hospital have a unit, a mental health unit that is able to provide uh, mental health specialized mental health services. But you can also get uh, the same help from. Uh, the, the doctors, the general practitioners, and specialists uh, who have their private practices, or even the private uh, sector, health sector, we do have uh, psychiatric services offered. There are other facilities that may other offer mental health services. Uh, we have institutes that offer psychological treatment, uh, like counseling centers. We have institutes that will ha offer rehabilitation services for addiction uh, to, alongside uh, mental health uh, treatment. So the, the, the services are available. Perhaps what is lacking is the awareness that these services can be accessed right from the primary health to the referral level. Your other family members, especially the grandparents who had uh, stayed with him earlier on, do they know that he, had, um, he has a mental illness that is being uh, taken care of and what are they thinking about it now? Yeah, I told them I told them that it was not easy for them. I told them they have to accept it. And uh, now they are positive about it and they, they are happy because they also hear the news. Nowadays it doesn't disappear. Nowadays it doesn't get lost. He doesn't refuse to eat. He has some weight at least. He's not that thin till he was mal. He looked like he was malnourished. Do you think there's anything or there's something that can be done to society so that they see this as any other illness that has solutions. Unless people get informed, because most of it see this illness as a superstition, most of them. Whereas when I was told, uh, I remember when we were leaving the hospital, the day was admitted at around 8 in the night. My brother told me, I asked my brother, this doctor was just telling me I wish I came in time and all that and all that, looking at the results. Moving, we are moving up and down, tests, medicine, all that, all that. But I was not told anything concrete what this boy is suffering from. Then my brother told me that he's suffering from something known as schizophrenia. I asked him, what is that? I've never heard such a thing. Then my brother told me that is a mental illness. With time, you will learn about it and you can also Google. 
The whole night I googled about schizophrenia, I read about schizophrenia. So you see, most of the people in the society, they don't know. Mm. And they don't know how to live with such people. I googled even how to live with them, how to cope with them. It is not easy. It calls for a lot of patience. Sometimes you have sleepless nights. You have to wake up with everybody else and go to work. When you go to work, you will not say, excuse me, may I have a nap? I did not sleep. And you have to be smiling at work throughout. You don't have to show people that I, this is what is happening. Every time we disturb the patient, we normally give a psychoeducation. And this is about how they are going to give this patient the medication because they have to be compliant so that uh, it doesn't relapse. And we normally tell them, if this patient refuses to take medication, that's a sign that they are not doing well to bring the patient back as soon as possible before he escalates to the other side. What would you advise is the best way to handle somebody with any sort of mental illness when somebody is suspecting that you know this person may be mentally unwell? The best thing is to bring that patient to the hospital, a mental, now like this one, Madari Hospital, or any psychiatric unit which is near them, because some are very far. They come as far as from even Madera, Wajia, Garissa, and some of these hospitals have got psychiatric units. So the best thing is to rush to the hospital and they get advice from the doctors. And as a society, are we handling mental health any better? Our perceptions, our attitudes, you say? There's a lot to be done to sensitize uh, the, the whole society at large. Because if it's taken like the HIV was done, eh, uh, educating the people about it, and I, I think it should be a national disaster, the way it's handled, so that many people get to know what mental illness is. Because not only the ones who have the patients get to know, and even the, the close relatives of that patient, mm -hmm. but still there are those people who don't know what mental illness is. Mm -hmm. So if we could do even more by more by clinics, mm -hmm. uh, I think that uh, that one can be better. Now for the ones who that we have educated, they also take the same message. They dis disseminate the message to their homes, and many are coming to understand and to accept that mental illness is a illness like any other. Thing. For his future now that is 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 recovering, he's not fully recovered because uh, some things he can say he still don't add up. Like if I if I stay away from home, maybe I travel. I come after three days, and when I come back, he cannot remember who I am. You see such like things. Those who are around him in the house, if somebody disappears for more than three days, when you come back, he looks at you like, who are you? Why are you here? He will even ask you, whom do you want to see? My mother is not around. It will take him like two more days to remember who you are. So that is what uh, the, the medicines he's taking. I was told it will heal with time. So maybe when he's fully healed, he was gifted in art, art, art work. Maybe I will take him to such college. Mm -hmm. He still continues on that. Yeah, I think maybe it was maybe 40 something kgs. Mm -hmm. At most. And now he is. Ah, now he's over 100. Yeah. Eh? Now you can see you can him. See. Mm. Mm. And now he can keep his clothes. The grandmas are, in fact, sometimes they ask, Do you send him to the shop and he comes back? I tell them, Yes. I give him a list with the money. And he goes to the supermarket and brings for me everything will change. He doesn't buy even a sweet. He brings back the change and everything. Till my daughter says, Mom, is, can you send him again? I can't believe. Mm. I tell my daughter, Yes, I'll send him tomorrow. We send him, he brings everything with change and places there, mm. which we could not happen before he started treatment. Mm. Could not happen. Before he started treatment, you'll send him, you'll see me after three days. Not because he went to enjoy the money. After taking two, three corners, he cannot trace himself back. So he continues walking, mm. and walking, and walking, and walking, and walking. 
and we are waiting for him. Yes. Do you ever see any change in attitudes uh, by the relatives, close friends, and the parents or the people who bring them here? Do you ever see any positive change once they've come here towards mental illness and also towards the person that they've brought who is unwell? Yeah, we normally tell them that mental illness is a disease like any other, that they should understand that uh, their son, this being a male ward now, mm -hmm. is suffering from mental illness, whereby the behavior, the thinking, and uh, the feelings of this patient are affected. And that's why they behave in a bizarre manner. Mm -hmm. They usually get shocked because even accepting that their uh, loved one has got such a mental, such an illness, they get shocked at first. There are some who come here, they demand that their patient be discharged so that they can take them for prayers. They become so impatient with the treatment that we give here because it takes a bit of some time for a patient to show any improvement. Mm -hmm. So they usually come demanding and we have to sit them down and educate them on how the medication works. Mm -hmm. With time, they usually now come to uh, get to know now, to understand about mental illness, the behavior, and even the management. And with time they are comfortable and they are patient enough to wait for the patient to be well and to be discharged. That's where we wrap up this episode of Health Digest. Stay tuned for our following episodes this June, where we explore other aspects of mental health. Have been your host, Dr. Masikorir. <laughs>